Well, greetings everyone, uh, welcome back to the, um, uh, bed. Now, before you get excited, this is not a new tape recorder, this is one that I've had for a while, and I'm just doing a few modifications to it. Because, I want to use this as the amplifier for my computer, and although I have that amplifier over there that I built, I'm not all that happy with it, so... So what I'm going to be modifying here, and I also want to be changing my audio setup a little bit. So, I want to modify this tape recorder, so I can use it as an amplifier, and then flick a switch and use it as a tape recorder again. And this does have quite a nice amplifier in it. Let's see a couple of the transistors over there. Original Sony Germanium transistors, I believe. I know they're Sony brand anyway. Now, I know this works because before I took it apart, I had a tape playing on it and it played just fine. It sounded pretty good, despite its age. Although there is one very weird problem with this, and that is the volume controls. Now, the right volume control functions as normal, as you turn it up and down, the volume goes up and down like you'd expect, but the left volume, I only have to turn this up just a little tiny bit and it's already blasting. So, yeah, that's something weird going on there. Well, looking at the underside of the tape recorder, I think I found the problem. Now. This is the right potentiometer, remember we're looking at this from the other side, so right is left and left is right. This is the left potentiometer. Now let's take a closer look at the right potentiometer. Notice that it says 20 kilo ohms, but more importantly, A. Okay, so the A means that's a logarithmic potentiometer, which is what you want to use for a volume control. Whereas this one, I have to take this out to show you. Well, for starters, it's the wrong value. It's 47 and it should be 20, but that's not really going to matter too much. But what, are you, what can you see there? It says B47K. If this had A47K, that would be alright, but um, B47? Well, that B means that it's a linear potentiometer. I have to explain the weird volume. I don't know if the previous owner did that or if I did that at some point. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any other. Well, I do have a few logarithmic potentiometers, but none that will actually fit into there. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tone control out because I never use this. I always have this turned up all the way. And this is a 20 kilo potentiometer. I believe this is a logarithmic one. So when this is turned up all the way, that's the tone turned up all the way. Giving us about 20 kilo ohms between these wires. So I'm just going to replace that with some 20 kilo ohm resistors. And that's going to replace this logarith um, linear potentiometer here. So, the modification that I'm going to do to this is... What I'm thinking of doing is running a set of extra wires from the inputs there. I believe this one is the input, which is to say... Yeah, aux in, so... Just running a set of extra wires from there, down to these potentiometers. Then I'm going to put a switch in, so I can switch this between normal operation and being used as an amplifier. Okay, well that's out. Now if the camera would actually focus on it. There we go. So this is the potentiometer removed. It does say 20 kilo ohms, but more importantly I can see, I can just about make out AX2. So the A tells me that this is a logarithmic. And the two, well, because there's two potentiometers in the same package. The only trouble is that there are only two tabs on each of these potentiometers. So what I'm going to try and do, I've 
clean these up and put a little bit of solder on there. So hopefully, I'll just solder the wires on there and it should work just fine. Alright, so we've got the quote unquote new volume potentiometer in there. Put a little bit of insulating tape there so it doesn't short out on the chassis, or chassis, whatever you want to call it. And of course, I've replaced that tone control with a couple of 20 kilo ohm resistors. So that's going to mimic what the tone control is like when it's set up all the way, which is where I always have it anyway, so that's not really going to make any difference. But now I just want to talk about um, potentiometers. I mean, why you'd want to use a logarithmic potentiometer in a volume control instead of a linear one. Okay, so I have two potentiometers here. They're both 47 kilohms. The only difference being one of them is a linear potentiometer and the other one is log. Can you tell which one is the log potentiometer? I'll give you a hint. It's this one. How do I know this one is logarithmic and this one is linear? Well, it's very simple. If we look at this one, you can see it says A47K, okay? And that A means that it is log. Whereas this one says B47K, which tells me it's linear. So what's the difference then? They're both potentiometers. They're both 47K. What's the difference apart from one of them having an A and one of them having a B? Well, the linear potentiometer, the change in resistance is pretty consistent all the way through, from one end to the other. But with the logarithmic potentiometer, the amount of change in the resistance also changes as you go along. So, we knew right at the low end and just give it a little bit of here and there. That's not going to be much change in resistance. And as you go up, the amount of change in the resistance increases. So, when you ride up at the other end, just a little bit of here and there gives you a big change in resistance. To show that these are both 47k, I'm going to bring in my faulty meter to go back a little bit. Let's first measure the linear from one end to the other. And you'll see we'll have round about 47k. Is if it would stop auto ranging. Okay, seems to be a bit of a bad connection there. There we go. So the meter's reading about 45 kilo ohms, and yeah, that's about right. It's not going to be 100% accurate. Now let's measure the linear and um, the logarithmic potentiometer. Let's just try and get that clip on there. It will get on there. It will stop turning as I'm trying to open it. You can see we have about the same. So I'm going to set this one. Actually, no. I'm going to do it with this one first. I'm going to set this one to its halfway point, which it already is at. And let's measure the resistance between set two contacts here. Then. These two contacts here. And it should be about. 23 kilo ohms. Oh, I don't know why this will not give me the reading. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we've got about 20 kilo ohms there. Which is still in the ballpark, still round about where it should be. Like I said, it's not going to be 100% accurate. But now with the linear potentiometer, I mean the logarithmic potentiometer set at its halfway point, let's see what we have. It's going to be a lot lower. And you can see we've got about 6.8 kilos. Which is a big difference from 20 kilos. So to get this one to 20 kilos, just get leads to go on there. Is it going to work this time? Okay. I have to turn it down quite considerably. Oh, we would just no. That was about six point eight, wasn't it? Yeah, that's about where it was. 
Yeah, that's about as good as I can get it. And this has actually turned down quite a lot. Um, it's quite hard to see exactly where I've got it turned to. I would have put a knob on here, but I don't have any that fit. But you can see that it's only turned about a quarter of the way. Oh yeah, let's try that with the linear. I mean, the logarithm. Oh, why do I keep getting those two mixed up? So this is the log. Let's try to get 22 or whatever kilos on here. Let's try to get a 23.5, which is exactly between one half of 47, I mean. Yeah, now I've got that turned up way more than halfway. Why is this better than this for a volume control? Well, this mimics more how the human hear hears changes in loudness, so... That's why you'd want to use a logarithmic potentiometer for a volume control. Okay, so back to the tape recorder. Now, I was going to install a switch to change the mode, you know, between tape recorder and amplifier. Although, I think I'm just going to rewire one of the switches that's already on here that I don't actually use. Now, cannot use this one here because that's on the function control, you know, playback, rewind, fast forward and whatnot. This one here is for the um, equalization, depending on the tape speed, so I'm not going to be able to use that one. This one here turns the speakers on and off, so I'm going to need to leave that one intact. There's a switch over here that I don't use. Now, this is for the sound-on-sound -sound feature, which I've never used on this tape recorder. So all I need to do is find out which of these wires are connected when the switch is in its neutral position. And then I'll just rewire my new connections to this switch and take these old ones out. Okay, well, they are colour-coded, so that's good. So we've got a red wire and an orange wire at the bottom here. So we can see where the red and the orange connect. And then we've got a white one and a brown one up here. So I can see where they connect. So when I want to put this back to its um, original state, I can just refer to this video. Well, I've demystified this switch. Also sprayed some contact cleaner in there to make sure it's contacting good. It turns out that um, when the switch is in this position, it connects the two wires that were connected here to this capacitor. When the switch is in this position, it connects the two wires that were right there to this capacitor instead. And when the switch is in its neutral position, nothing gets connected to anything. Yeah, anyway, I've demystified the contacts on this switch. So, when it's in this position, um, let me just get something to point with so you actually know what contacts I'm pointing to. This contact and this contact get connected together. And this contact and this contact get connected together. When it's in the middle position, this contact and this contact get connected together, and this contact and this contact get connected together, and of course, when it's in this position, this contact and this contact get connected together, and this one and this one. It's a little bit different to how I thought, but I can still work with that. Gonna have to take out that capacitor as well, I'll just desolder one leg. So it's still in there, but not in there, if you know what I mean. Okay, well, here is the finished modification. So there's the switch, all rewired. I know it's not the best quality work in the world, but you know me. I've got two wires going up to the auxiliary input. And the switch at the bottom here, so I can switch between Amplifier mode, neutral, where it's not going to do anything, and tape recorder mode. Okay, so I'm during the process of putting this back together. Now I know some of you are thinking, 
But poor dude Clem, why didn't you just put it in record mode? It'll monitor. You didn't need to do all this. You're so stupid. Yes, I know that. But the thing is, under this shield here, there is a circuit with two enormously long switches that change between record and play mode. With hundreds, well maybe not hundreds, but loads and loads of contacts and I'm not even going to attempt to clean those switches. Because at the moment this thing does not record. Because of the state of those switches, and like I said, they're just, um, they're just not worth bothering with. Bet you didn't think I'd get this back together. But here it is, the finished product, if you will. With the new switch. Well, same switch, but wired differently. So it does a completely different thing to what it originally did. Question is, does this work? After all that. Well, okay. Power's on. I've got it connected up to this speaker over here. Let's see if it plays. Oh, it's playing. We're just at the wrong speed here. To be miserable. It's the cool thing to be miserable if you're an English teenager. That's so right. I used to know someone just like that. Alright, I'm now putting the speaker into the other jack. Let's see if that plays. I don't even know what's on this tape. So, does that mean you actually want to be miserable then if it's okay. this new trend you're following? So, uh, this is the... what have I got this plugged into right now? That's the left output, so it's going to be this control here. Yeah. He agrees. I want to be, be oh yeah, that is working just right. Alright, now I'm going to plug that into the thing. It looks like I recorded this onto both tracks of the tape. Alright, let's put this into play. Also, that makes me cool. You think of Crackly, but... Jeez, James, you made such a high noise there, you broke a window. Even though it was me doing the voice. Okay, well, I've got some music playing on the computer now. Which is connected to the aux input of the reel-to-reel. -reel. I've got the switch selected to amp. So let's just turn up the volume here. What do you know? I made something that works. I'll switch this to tape. Okay, now start the tape playing. Sonic the Tape's not quite as loud, but... Pretty much speaks for itself. Alright, now I'll just shut this up. So, yeah, all in all, I think this has been a success. I think later on I'm gonna have to go and replace the main filter cap in this because when I turn it on, there's a bit of a hum which then just fades away, but you know, you know, that's a simple thing to do. So, I think it's time to put this into service, connect both speakers up and everything. Anyway, I'm sure this video is getting long, so until next time, goodbye.